today we are doing a tutorial on a coffee mug and how to do that using colored pencils. I will be putting this in my sketchbook. So first thing you'll need to do is find something to create your circle for your coffee cup. I've shown two options here. Uh, just find a size that works best with the paper that you're using. I would suggest keeping this circle relatively small just as we work through this actual tutorial. And so once you found a option that works best for you, you'll want to use a pencil and lightly go around the edge of your circular base. The circle we are doing is for the outer edge of your coffee mug. Now the arm that you add, you can have that be decorative or you could have it be pretty simple. I'm keeping mine pretty simple here. I am doing mine based off of a reference photo that I found. I will make sure to link that in the description so that if you would like to follow along based off of this same image, you may do so. Essentially, the arm of your coffee mug is a rectangle placed directly next to a triangle. Now we need to create the rim of our coffee mug so that that way we can place our delicious coffee on the inside. Now you can really choose to do this however thin you would like or however thick you would like, depending upon what your ideal coffee mug is. But I did mine about half a centimeter so that that way I could add in a little bit of shadows as well as have some room to be able to work some bubbles up the side. As you continue working your way around the cup, make sure that your marks are light and you're not adding a ton of pressure. We don't want to see these marks on our finished piece. So just very lightly move them in just so that you're able to see the variance in where your outer edge is and where that inner edge is. Now I'm going to loosely mark in where I want to have my different color ranges. Uh, on the reference photo, it has some very beautiful bubbles along the edge and then the dark black coffee closer to your inner sections. So I'm just loosely marking those in so that that way when I begin adding color, it's easier to know where those color changes need to be and allows me to progress more quickly through my drawing. Prior to beginning adding color, I'm actually gonna lighten up the edge of my coffee mug a bit more just because I would like this to be a white coffee mug and so I don't want those super harsh dark edges. And now we move on to adding color to our piece. So the first color I am using here is the espresso and I'm applying this with medium pressure so not super hard pressure, but also not the lightest pressure and then trying to move in circular motions as I add in this very dark brown in the center section of my coffee mug. After I've worked through adding in those main large sections of the espresso color, I'm gonna go in and add some of the bubbles. Now, the great thing about those bubbles is that they are not perfect circles, so you can keep them pretty random throughout the edges. I have a few going all the way up to the edge of that inner circle, and then I add other little bubbles throughout, similar to what you see in the reference photo. Now what you may notice is that I am applying a bit more pressure when I'm doing these bubbles and that's just because I don't plan to actually incorporate a ton of extra colors into those sections. After you've added in your larger bubbles and that main portion, you can go in with your ginger root and we are actually gonna cover the entire portion of the foamy crema beautifulness on top of our coffee mug with a medium to light pressure using that ginger root just to add a little bit of color. As you begin adding it in, don't be worried about going over your bubbles within the section or even slightly going into your darker mass with the ginger root. That is just helping add in the blending of this section. 
Once you've completed adding in the ginger root, we're gonna go back in with our espresso pencil and actually darken up this middle section and working to define those edges of the foam a little bit more. One thing to keep in mind when you're working on a drawing like this is how dull or how sharp your pencil is. For me, I've always found that I get the best results when my pencil is very sharp or only slightly dull. I feel like when you have a very dull pencil, it makes what you're trying to do actually a lot harder and especially if you're trying to have crisper edges. The super sharp pencil helps when I'm trying to blend in colors and as you can see I'm going over sections that have some of that ginger root added in and I just feel like it allows you to create more of the effect you're looking for and really blend that together. Once you're done darkening that up, we're actually gonna go in with some of this pumpkin orange and we're gonna add that to sections of our foam. So based on the reference photo, there are some darker sections of that foam or crema, however you wanna refer to it. And so we're just lightly adding this in. I wouldn't say add it in to the entire section as I feel like part of the appeal of this particular photo of this drawing is that you have that contrast from the very dark coffee to the lighter foam on top. So I'm just lightly adding this in as I see fit, sticking pretty close to the edge of our coffee mug and then just blending it through the different sections and keeping some of the sections a bit darker just because it's not going to be uniform across all of the foam. Once you've added that pumpkin orange in through your foam in the way you like, having some darker sections and some lighter, I would suggest taking that same color and actually lightly blending over your espresso portion in that dark blob and just really trying to pull the color throughout this whole area. And now I'm taking the espresso pencil and moving from our dark section up into the cream section. So trying to blend out that edge a bit more so that that way it gradually transitions into the dark coffee and isn't such a harsh line. This is being done with a medium to light pressure and sticking with circular motions. In addition, there are a couple sections towards the edge of the foam that I'm gonna darken up a bit with this espresso pencil just to add a little bit more dimension to that foam. Now I'll be using the Sandbar Brown to further blend that cream and the coffee together and just really work to blend those edges and create a better transition between the two. During this process, I am still using that medium to light pressure to continue to develop those layers and this beautiful color. As I was working with that sandbar brown and developing a darker cream on top, I realized that I wanted to use some more of the orange, so I got out the pumpkin orange again and developed some of that a tad more. Now I'm using the ginger root again to create the illusion of some bubbles along the edge of the glass. I will have bubbles that are connected just straight to the cream and then we will also have the other half circle bubbles connected to the darker half circle bubbles. 
providing the illusion that you have bubbles resting along the interior portion of your coffee mug. You'll want to continue repeating this technique until you have the level of bubbles that you'd like along the edge. I am loosely following the reference photo so that that way I can add those in. After I've created the bubbles, I am going to use the warm gray 90% to continue developing the dark portion of that black coffee. And then I will begin to add in smaller and finer little bubbles throughout the cream section. For me, this is when I felt like the coffee mug really started coming to life as I added in those darker values in the existing bubbles, as well as these finer little bubbles throughout. It just really, to me, started looking like a real cup of coffee. Then I am going to use this jade green to create some of the shadows within my white coffee mug. So I will lightly, with a medium to light pressure, create the shadow illusion of the inside of the cup. So you're still wanting to leave some of that white edge for the very top of your cup as you're looking down, and then just begin to incorporate that color along the edge. Once I have completed adding that color into the inner rim of my coffee mug, I'm going to begin on the arm. For the arm, I am going to have the shadow be darkest, closest to the rim of the coffee mug, and gradually become lighter as an ombre effect towards the outer edge of that arm. For the triangle portion, which would be your under portion of your arm, we're going to make this actually quite a bit darker since that would be hidden in shadow from the vantage point you're looking at. The top of the arm I would do in a light to medium pressure and the under portion, your triangle section, I would do in a medium to not quite heavy pressure just so that way you're really able to develop that color and your base. Now I'm using a white colored pencil and I will be using this to blend in the entire coffee portion, both from the cream and over top of the darker portions. This will help with creating that better transition between the cream to darker coffee. Don't worry about going over the bubbles. We will fine tune those momentarily. This is really just to help even out and blend in all of the colors that we have layered below. Once you've finished blending, whether that's with a colorless blender or with the white colored pencil like I had used, we will be going back in with that warm gray at 90% to just develop the contrast a little bit more on this coffee mug. So I am using a medium to firm pressure just to add in those darker values. Now to continue adding some contrast. So I am using the five of my Jelly Roll, which is the finest of those pens, to begin adding in some very fine details. Now I'm choosing to go around some of the bubbles just along one edge, just to create a lip of 
contrast on some of the bubbles and then I'm also adding in little dots along the cream just for some additional contrast. As you create these dots and you go around your bubbles, I will say that less is more. So don't go around each and every bubble. I wouldn't say to keep all of the bubble sections completely consistent as bubbles on the top of a coffee mug aren't consistent. They're not all the same size. They're not all located in the same area. So just continually add those in until you feel like you've hit the right amount and just know that worst case scenario, you can come back in and add more later if you don't feel that the contrast was pushed quite far enough. As I began to add in the lighter contrast, I decided to also go back in with that warm gray 90% pencil and define the edges of a few of the bubbles a little bit more and then actually add in some smaller bubbles along the lighter section on the left just to make it a little bit more realistic. Then using that same pencil, I'm going to go in and develop the shadow of the arm of our coffee mug a bit further and keep it along the edge that connects the rectangle to the triangle as well as along the base of the coffee mug. Now on to adding our background. Now you could do this in any color, but for ease of time and number of pencils selected for this drawing, I am actually going to begin by just using the ginger root and creating a solid base. And then over top of that, I'm going to use the jade green. I'm using medium pressure of both of these colors to create that solid base. And then going back in with the warm gray at the end, just to add a little hint of a, an additional shadow. And now for the final step. So we are taking the number eight jelly roll and going in and adding additional highlights. And that's just to kind of push that contrast a tad more. I wanted the highlights around a few of the bubbles just to be a little bit brighter than what they were previous. And once this step is completed, your coffee mug drawing is done. Woohoo! You have done it! You have completed this beginner tutorial on how to use colored pencils to draw this delicious cup of black coffee. If you do complete this tutorial, I would love for you to tag me on Instagram or send me a picture. I can't tell y'all how much I appreciate those posts and I do want to give a special shout out to all of my subscribers. Thank you all so, so much for your support. And I can't believe I just hit a thousand subscribers. You guys are all fantastic. And I hope at the very least y'all have a fabulous rest of your day. Thank you.